Good evening, this is Bell Geode and we are back with some Microsoft Flight Simulator X Steam Edition. This is the Vietnam Era Part 3. Alright, so we are here in Da Nang Air Base in South Vietnam and this is the Douglas A-1 Sky Raider. We're going to be flying a special mission here, doing a little bit of combat ops over the uh, Laotian border. Okay, and this aircraft has been created by Tim Piglet Conrad. So, as you can imagine, he put a lot of love into this, and I'm really looking forward to this sucker. Alright, we're waiting for the order to start up here, and then we'll go ahead and get going. Sandy oh. 2, go ahead and start up. And there we go, starting up now. Okay, so like a good wingman, I'm going to go ahead and shut up and have him do all of the calls to the tower and whatnot. And then we will get ready to mosey on out. So I'll be flying with a guy today who goes by the call sign Chuck Wagon. Don't ask, but yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> Denang ground, Douglas 39703, request taxi for takeoff, departing straight out. Douglas 39703, taxi two and hold short of runway three four, using taxiway. Contact tower on 127.6 when ready. Yeah, Chuck Wagon's got this. Taxiing, hold short, runway 34 via taxiway, Douglas 703. So, yeah, the Sandy. I gotta admit, this is one of my favorite little planes from the Vietnam era. I mean, it's, it's really an anachronism when you think about it. Here we are in the middle of the jet age, and you've got this little propeller-driven thing that dates back to, like, late 1940s still flying around and getting all kinds of combat sorties done for the United States Navy, the US Marine Corps, the Air Force, hell even the Royal Navy, the British Royal Navy, the French Air Force, and of course the South Vietnamese Air Force, which is the texture that we're flying today. And I'm just gonna stop right here because I don't feel like trimming Chuck Wagon's tail, so we'll let him go for a sec here and then we'll kind of inch our way forward. Got to be careful with this bird as well, too. This thing had a nasty tendency of nosing over if you hit the brakes too hard. So, yeah, hopefully this won't be an epic fail here. And I'm going to be telling you more about the A-1 Sky Raider as soon as we take off here. I can tell you that our uh, top secret mission here, we're actually going to cross the Laotian border. So we're going to be in a country of Laos, which uh, neighbors Vietnam, of course. And we're going to be assaulting a fire base. Or to be more precise, we're going to harass uh, an air base that we found out was overtaken by the North Vietnamese. Basically, they came down the Ho Chi Minh Trail, and we can't afford to have them set this sucker up, you know? I'm sure you can imagine the brouhaha that would erupt if uh, North Vietnam was allowed to actually have an air presence just next door to South Vietnam. It's just not going to work that way. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to go ahead and see if we can cause a ruckus there. Now, they didn't give us any bombs here because, honestly, you know, being part of the South Vietnamese Air Force, we get the short end of the stick. But we do have a lot of bullets, and I'm hoping the bullets are going to count. All right, we should be hearing from Chuck Wagon any second now as he calls for clearance for both of us to take off. So I'm going to, like, uh, slide up behind him here. And just patiently wait. That's a good afternoon to fly to. Da Nang Tower, Douglas 39703, ready at runway 34, departing straight out. Douglas 39703, clear for takeoff, runway 34, straight out, departure, approved. Cleared for takeoff, runway 34, Douglas 703. Alright, two, see you up there. Copy that, Sandy One. I'm right behind you. All right. Time to get this show on the road. So we're going to wait for him to start his takeoff roll, and then we will take the active runway behind him. And we should be wheels up by the time he is starting his downwind leg. Okay, so there he goes. We'll give him till about that taxiway there, and we'll start getting into position here. Actually, you know what? That's good enough. Now, just to forewarn you, I'm really good when it comes to being a wing lead, but as a wingman, uh, yeah. I'm only hoping I can keep up with him. 
All right, well, he's airborne now, so I'm going to go ahead and crank her out to full throttle, and we are going to get this bird off the ground. And let's do some hard facts on the aircraft as we uh, lift off from Da Nang here. So even though it was called the Sandy, the official nickname of it was the Spad after the uh, French World War I fighter. And let's go ahead and get the gear up. And then these noisy ass flaps. Listen to that. Holy crap. That is in freaking insane. Anyway, this sucker first flew on the March 18th of 1945, so it was a little too late to actually participate in World War II. But of course, it was used extensively in the Korean War and obviously the Vietnam War. And let's see if we can catch up with the uh, chuck wagon here. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna slide up to about his seven or eight o'clock there but I know he's gonna start turning onto our course, so I gotta keep that in mind while I'm at it. In any event, we had a crew of one. The aircraft is 38 feet, 10 inches long, uh, wingspan of about 50 feet, and power plant was one Wright R3350-26WA radial engine, which is good for 2,700 horsepower. And we're not even going to bother to respond to these guys because, yeah, we're not coming back to this airport. It's part of the plan, man. It's all part of the plan. Anyway, we could get a maximum speed out of this sucker of about 322 miles per hour or 280 knots. And uh, cruise speed was usually around 172 knots or 198 miles per hour. With drop tanks and whatnot, uh, we could go a total distance of around uh, 1144 nautical miles and we've got a service ceiling of about 28,500 feet. So yeah, as you can see this sucker uh, this sucker was built to last basically as were many things back in those days. As far as armament goes, we've got four 20 millimeter cannons to work with today. Uh, normally we could carry about 8,000 pounds of ordnance on 15 external hard points. But, South Vietnamese cheap, so, yeah. We get all the hand-me-downs from the Air Force. Alright, uh, where the hell is Chuck Wagon? I know he's around here somewhere. Uh, there he is, there he is. Okay, I'm going to try and stay as close to him as possible, and I'm going to be doing something a little bit special for this episode that I've never done in any of my FSX videos. So we're going to do a little bit of picture-in-picture picture so that you can see the point of view of myself as well as Sandy1 and we are passing over one of the major air bases here in Da Nang. There's like three air bases that are all named Da Nang, but they all have like uh, different sub names or whatever. Um, I think the one that we just took off from was called Marble Mountain, by the way. Now, as you can imagine, uh, with this aircraft pretty much being a throwback to a bygone era, even though it was well respected and well loved by its pilots, it also took a whole hell of a lot of ribbing. Um, on one occasion, um, to highlight the dropping of the six millionth pound of ordnance, uh, one of the pilots of attack squadron VA-25, which is a Navy squadron, actually dropped a toilet from the bomb rack. I'm not even kidding you. An actual toilet was dropped on the Viet Cong. <laughs> it's just craziness here. Um, of course, the South Vietnamese did use it extensively. Now, the South Vietnamese pilots that would fly this originally flew the Bearcat, which is another uh, World War II era plane. But they ended up having about 308 of these Sky Raiders at their disposal by the time the war really ramped up and the U.S. got involved. So, like I said, they eventually got the Air Force's hand-me-downs, but even so, they managed to do a really good job with this sucker. They became really good pilots of this. I think it's definitely safe to say that the South Vietnamese got a lot of mileage out of this bird right here. And in addition to miles, this thing had actually way more nicknames than I thought. Now, a, a word of uh, note on the nickname the Sandy. The Sandy was actually the type of mission that it was flying. It was That name was assigned to it by the 607th ACS SOS. That was actually the call sign for the Combat Search and Rescue Helicopter Escorts. 
So those jolly green giants and whatnot that would fly picking up our downed pilots, they would be escorted by these guys, and they actually called that flight the Sandy. It's just one of those names that stuck, though. Um, among some of the other nicknames that it's received, the South Vietnamese used to call it the Crazy Water Buffalo. I don't even want to know how they came up with that one. And, of course, um, it's been, it's individual planes have had names like the Big Gun, Old Faithful, Old Miscellaneous, Fat Face, Guppy, Q-Bird, Flying Dump Truck, which I thought was absolutely hilarious when I first read about that one. And, of course, uh, the Navy used to call it Able Dog because usually on the tail, the uh, tail code was Alpha and Delta, so Able Dog. And where in the hell are we? Holy crap. As you can imagine, there's no GPS in this thing. Well, technically there is, but I'm not using it for these types of missions because we wouldn't have had one back in Vietnam. So I am trusting that Sandy One knows exactly where we're heading. I just know that there's a hell of a lot of that evening fog rolling in, which means we ain't going to see any of this AK-47 fire coming up at us here. And I'm a little bit worried about that. You will notice, however, that I changed the point of view, so that way we can see both aircraft in the picture-in-picture picture here. Alright, we should be getting close to our target area now. I think it's only about 15 minutes flying time. We've been up here for, what, 8 thereabouts? So yeah, I'm going to shut up and I will be right back once we're ingressing into the target zone. Sandy 1, I have visual of our target zone. Go trail and prepare for our attack run. Sandy 2, copy that. Going trail and getting ready for our attack run. Alright folks, this is it. So he's going to get a little bit of altitude here and then he's going to start uh, going after them. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and slide over to the right here. There we go, that looks good. And there's a signal, the wing waggle. Okay. Fight's on. I'm thinking what he's going to do is do like a little shallow pass there. Yeah, there he goes. And I'm going to try and mirror his movements. We're going to keep a few seconds separation so that way my bullets don't hit him. And there he goes. Okay, I'm going to follow him. And let's do this. Guns, guns, guns. Mama, if that didn't wake up Charlie, nothing will. Of course, any uh, element of surprise that we would have had in this noisy ass sucker has uh, just been dissipated, so the next couple of runs are going to be real interesting here. Alright, I am going to try and stick to Sandy 1 6 o'clock here. Actually, I see him in the picture in picture, but I can't find him out here. I guess I'll wait for him to make a turn to the left. It's got to be popping up here somewhere. Now, needless to say, the 20 cal would be good against uh, personnel, but it's not going to help us if there were any, like, combat vehicles or AAA or anything like that down there. So they're probably going to need to come in with some of the heavy hitters, like the Phantom, a uh, little bit later and blow this thing to kingdom come. But for now, we are just like a mosquito, and we're going to basically cause them hell. All right, I think I'm outside of Sandy 1. Yeah, there he is. Okay. All right, so we are ready for our next run. And this is going to amp up a notch here. All right, I'm going to try and see if I can slide in trail behind him. And then we'll go ahead for run number two. He's already ingressing. Holy crap. Okay, this one's going to hurt, Charlie. I hate it when I'm right. Well, I call that one. Charles was none too pleased about that attack, and he is throwing everything he has at us. So, yeah, we're going to be the hasty retreat here. And don't ask me how in the hell we're going to get the rest of these runs done. All right, uh, Sandy 1 is off to my left, so let me see if I can get him on the main window there. Oh, now he's heading right. Lovely. 
Well, he's got the right idea, though. I mean, if you've got incoming fire, you better be jinking all over the place in the hopes that they will not hit you. Uh, but yeah, I think the longer we stay over here, the less our survivability is going to be. But we'll probably do this a few more times, and then we'll bug out, or at least we'll run out of ammo anyway. Sandy 2, stay frosty out there. We're going to do a couple more runs. Sandy 2 copies right behind you, as always. A couple more runs, he says. This dude is officially on crack. <sighs> Alright, here we go again. Not to mention, I hasten to add that as the trailer, I'm going to be getting the brunt of all of this stuff after he flies over. Alright, here we go. Guns, guns, guns. I'm running into compressibility issues. I can only get two trigger presses off. I am getting out of here. Holy crap, did I mention how much I dislike this? Ah, oh, crap, and I'm starting to take hits here. This is officially no bueno. Needless to say, if we survive this one, this will be a bloody miracle. But this is exactly what our pilots would have had to deal with, and the South Vietnamese pilots would have had to deal with back in Nam. Damn. Well, luckily, I don't see anything trailing off of my plane, so we're good. We're good. I really don't want to go back in and do this again. I think we're really pushing our luck at this point. I'm guessing that's the downside of having a huge payload, lots of bullets, and a very long loiter time. Now, can you imagine doing this as a helo escort? You're rescuing downed pilots, and basically you've just got to be like the eyes, ears, and fangs for them. Oh, man. My hat goes off to you, folks. All right, one is in. I am in. Let's do this thing. Please don't shoot me out of the sky. And I'm off the target. I'm egressing. Let's give this sucker some gas because I don't feel like going home looking like Swiss cheese. Assuming I make it home at all. Holy hell, look at one. Damn, he's doing some serious vertical maneuvers there. Alright, well I'm going to match him then. I don't know how many times he wants to go back and do this. Oh, crap. It looks like he's setting up for another run. Well, I sincerely hope this is our last run, because we are not going to last much longer against these suckers. Egress from target. We are out of here. RTB. Roger that. Sandy 2 copies. RTB. And not a second too soon. Holy crap. That was crazy. Sandy 2, I'm taking hits here. Charlie's in the trees. I'm going in for a strafing run. What the hell is he doing? Oh, snap. Looks like Charles's reinforcements are in the tree line over there. Alright, well, I'm going to need to cover him on this, so I'm going in. Well, I still can't see shit down there, but I'm hoping that did something. Well, if there was ever a sign that we have overstayed our welcome, I'm pretty sure that was it. We need to get the hell out of here, and fast. Um, I think we're supposed to land at Fubai, so I'm gonna just take a look around here and make sure we don't have any more AK-47 fire coming up at us. Alright, uh, it looks clear. What the hell is one doing? Yeah, he's flying awful funny there. Okay, well, now I'm gonna... Uh, Sandy 2, this is Sandy 1. I think I got a problem here. That last run, they hit my control surfaces. I'm starting to lose control of the aircraft here. Oh, shit. My cylinder head pressure's going down. I copy, Sandy 1. Can you make it back to base? I'm gonna try, but I'm not so sure about this. This thing's handling like a squirrel with its tail on fire. Roger that, Sandy 1. I'm still on your 6. I don't see anything trailing from your aircraft, um, so if you could... See if you can gain some altitude, I will back you up on that. Ah, uh, that's a big negative there, Sandy 2. My elevators are frozen. I cannot gain altitude. Repeat, I cannot gain altitude. And cylinder head pressure is now down to zero. Engine's about to quit. Ugh, I was afraid of this. 
Copy that, Sandy One. Don't worry, I am right behind you. I'm going to stick with you as much as I can here. Sandy Two, it's no good. I'm trying to use the ailerons here to see if I can flip the plane over to a good attitude to gain some altitude, but I'm just not getting any power out of this engine here. I don't mind telling you folks, this does not look good for Sandy One here. Copy that, Sandy One. I'm not even sure what to tell you at this point. I'm just, I'm right with you here. Uh, this just does not look good. He's getting awful close to that tree line. Sandy 2, this is Sandy 1. My engine just died and my rudder is freezing up. I am going in. Mayday, mayday, mayday. Sandy 1, can you bring it down on that road ahead of us? Negative, I've got a dead stick. I'm going in. I'm going to try and glide it into the tree line. This is going to hurt. Folks, I don't care who you are. This is the most helpless feeling a military pilot can ever have is watching their buddy, their wingman, or their wing leader in this case, going down. I'm surprised he still managed to hold his plane together there. Except I lost him. Oh no, wait, there he is, right in front of the wing. I'm trying to get a good angle here so I can see if he's actually going to make it. He's veering off to the right here. Oh man, tense moments, tense moments. Okay, he is just above my right wing. I lost him again. Where the hell is he? I hope you can see him because I sure as hell can't. Oh wait, no, I got him, I got him. Okay, he is just to the left of my right wing. Come on, baby, come on. You can make it, Chuck Wagon. Alright, he is right in front of my prop right now. Looks like he's slowing down. He's hitting the trees. I hope he remembers his radio. Okay, he's come to a full stop, it looks like. I don't see any smoke. I don't see any fire, so this is good. As long as he's not knocked unconscious, then we could still salvage this. But of course, now what I've got to do is I've got to go ahead and call in for the SAR helo. So with that in mind, Mayday, 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 Da Nang Tower. This is Sandy 2. Sandy 1 is down. Repeat, Sandy 1 is down. Request immediate assistance. Send SAR helo. Our current location, latitude north, 16 degrees, 6.23 minutes. Longitude east, 107 degrees, 33.50 minutes. I am establishing an orbit around Sandy 1. Please send SAR helo ASAP. Sandy 2 out. Copy emergency, Sandy 2. Dispatching SAR from Hubei Air Base. Stand by. This is Jolly Green 1. We are leaving Fubai now. ETA 10 minutes. Holy hell, am I glad to hear from you guys. I've established an orbit around Sandy 1 and I'm keeping an eye out uh, because we did have contact nearby. So if you guys can uh, put the pedal to the metal, certainly will appreciate it. In the meantime, I'll try to keep their heads down. Roger that, Sandy 2. We are going as fast as we can. Like I said, we should be there now. ETA 9 minutes. That's good news, Jolly Green One. Okay, I'm gonna try and see if I can raise Sandy One. I'm hoping you remember to take his radio out of the plane. Sandy One, this is Sandy Two. Are you reading me? 
Sandy 1, this is Sandy 2. Are you reading me? Come in, please. Sandy 1, this is Sandy 2. You there? Are you reading me? Sandy 2, this is Sandy 1. I read you 5 by 5. We've got company down here. I'm hearing noises coming from the north. I'm pretty sure Charlie's still in the trees over there. I'm gonna lay low. Roger that, Sandy One. I'm gonna see if I can lay down some suppressive fire to the north of you here. We've got a SAR incoming ETA eight minutes. Get some, Charlie. Get some. Ah, oh, hell. This just got personal here. Sorry, Charlie. Not today. I refuse to go down with the ship. Alright, I'm going to see if I can do another run around here. Got to remember where uh, Sandy 1 is so that I can relay his position over to the SAR helo once it gets here. Alright, I'm going in. I do not want to hit that tree line. Oh, crap. Gotta keep jinking. Gotta keep jinking. Whew. Well, this is really getting tense now, folks. I hope that uh, Jolly Green 1 hurries up and gets here, because I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to last out by myself with these guys. Sandy 2, this is Jolly Green 1. We are ETA 2 minutes out. Copy that, Jolly Green 1. We are going to need to make this as quick as possible. We've got tangos flooding into the valley. It does not look good here. I'm still in contact with Sandy 1. However, he is laying low because he's got uh, people closing in on his location from pretty much the north and the west. Roger, Sandy 2. If you can hold him off just a little bit longer, we'll be inbound. <laughs> I'm going to do what I can, but uh, I'm feeling like a cat here running out of my nine lives. All right, Marines, where in the hell are you? We're around here somewhere. All right, let me contact Sandy 1. Sandy 1, if you can still hear me, we've got exfiltration coming in less than two minutes. Stand by. I appreciate it, Sandy 2. All I've got down here for defense is my Beretta. I'm gonna go a little bit further south. I think I see a little flaring there. Sandy 2, we have visual on you right now, and we can hear Sandy 1 on the radio. We are heading to his location. Man, I have never in my life been so happy the United States Marine Corps coming out here. I second that, Sandy 2. I think we owe you guys a 12 pack. I see you guys. You're directly above me. Go ahead and drop your cable. Cable's coming down. Sandy 2, can you give us some covering fire, please? Is the Pope Catholic? I'll take care of this. Got him. We're reeling him up now. Roger that. Hang on, everybody. We're heading out of here. I'm going to lay down one more pass, and then I've got to get out of here as well. I'm almost Winchester. Sandy 2, package is on board. We are heading back to base.
Copy that. Thank you so much, Jolly Green One. Really saved our bacon today. We'll see you back at Fubai. Very nice. Well, this mission may have had like a happy ending, but there were a lot of pilots in Vietnam that did not make it back. They were flying this aircraft. Not all of them were American. A lot of them were South Vietnamese as well. And this episode goes out to those brave pilots that did not make it home. Alright, but speaking of which, I'm going to gain a little bit of altitude so I'm at least out of small arms range and I am heading home. Alright, I think we got to go... Wait, is it this way? Yeah, I think I see a base over there. Okay. I'm going to hang out to the left here. Man, I'm surprised this old bird held it all together there. I feel bad about uh, Sandy One's aircraft, but I'm sure he'll get a new one momentarily. In the meantime, uh, let's see if we can get this bad girl home. We're going to go to Fubai, which of course is not the airport that we uh, took off from. It's uh, Da Nang, which was a little bit further to the south there. But Fubai is going to be closer, so I should be there in roughly about six or seven minutes. Should get there just before Jolly Green actually does. So yeah, really hoping that you've enjoyed this episode. As you can see, Fubai is directly ahead. And I'm thinking I'm probably going to need to go to the right of the airport for my approach. But we'll find out in a moment. We should be close enough to contact Fubai Tower now, so let me see if I can raise them on the nearest airport list. Uh, oh no, we don't want Ho Chi Minh Center, that's too far in the future there. There it is, number one. Okay, Victor, Victor, Papa, Bravo, team in the tower, tell them we want to land. Fubai Tower, Douglas 3, Niner 703, 7 miles south to land. Douglas 3, Niner 703, Fubai Tower, center left, traffic, runway 27, altimeter 2933. I think I can do that. Enter left downwind, runway 27, Douglas 703. Now, I probably should have addressed them as Sandy 2, but since this is FSX and ATC is so screwy, yeah, we'll, we'll deal with it. Suspend your disbelief. In the meantime, I think I'm coming in a little too fast there. Uh, yep. Airspeed close to 300 knots. Okay, I think it's time for air brakes. Glad for that landing clearance. Cleared to land, runway 27, Douglas 703. Alright, pull the air brakes in. And get the gear down. And of course, the noisy ass flaps. Sheesh. Okay, well, at least the bird is still in one piece, even if she does sound a little bit squirrely. I don't know, maybe I got a round somewhere in the engine, I don't know. But at least the aircraft is still flying, which is the important thing. Alright, so let's go ahead and bring her home. And look at that sunset. Look at that beautiful Vietnamese sunset. Now you can't tell me that is not a thing of beauty right there. I'm pretty sure the sky still looks like that today, but damn. <laughs> and we can thank Rex for that one. Alright, uh, we are on base leg. Just a little bit more. I'm keeping my speed between 80 and 90 knots. Because we do have a pretty stiff headwind on the way in there. Actually, it's more of a crosswind. It's not a true headwind. So, we may need to do a little bit of crabbing to get down on this runway. Just to forewarn you, 
you know how I am with those crosswind landings. Alright, we'll see if we can pull this off though. If nothing else but to honor Sandy 1. Okay, so we got the touchdown camera ready. And we're a little bit to the left, and yep, sure enough, we got some nice breeze going there. So I'm going to be crabbing this sucker in. A little bit of rudder action there. Oh, too much rudder action. Okay, I'm going to have to overcompensate here. Hey, look at that, the lights just came on. Lovely, perfect timing. It's like they knew I was coming. Amazing. Alright, I am way off center again. <laughs> Don't expect the center line landing on this one. We're pretty much going to take it as it comes. There we go. And I did mention before, you got to be really careful with this one. You do not want to hit the brakes because you will go end over end. So we have the speed brakes out now and that will help us out. Get rid of that box. And as soon as I get slow enough, I'm just, just going to do gentle love taps on the brakes. That's going to be like the only way we're going to stop this sucker. Okay, looking good, looking good. Track the speed brakes. And I'm thinking we're going to park off to the right there where those Hueys are in that DC-3. So let me go ahead and pull off this way. Okay. One one eight point eight for Douglas seven zero three. Foo by ground, Douglas three nine or seven zero three. Request taxi to parking. Douglas three nine seven zero three. Taxi to general aviation parking. Why do I have the feeling they want me to park on the other side of the airport? Taxiing the general aviation parking via taxiway runway nine. Douglas 703. Uh, yeah, that's not happening. I'm just going to turn off the progressive taxi right now. That's just not happening. This is my parking spot right here. They can move the plane after that. Hey, I did my combat time. I, I need a beer right about now. And as soon as, uh, as soon as our boys in Jolly Green land with Sandy 1, yeah, I think we're all going to have some beer. So, if you need us, we will be on this side of the airport, chugging a 12-pack of Pabst Blue Ribbon. All right, let's go ahead and turn this bird off. Thank you so much, Sandy. I appreciate your service. A1 Sky Raider, such an awesome plane. And thank you to Piglet Conrad for creating this. Tim Piglet Conrad. And looky, here come the Marines with Sandy 1. Lovely. Alright, well as soon as these guys land, we're going to go ahead and call it quits. So while they're coming down, I would like to thank you, the viewer, for watching this. As always, this has been Bell Geo playing Microsoft Flight Simulator X Steam Edition. This has been part of my Vietnam era series. This was episode 3. Still not sure what aircraft we're going to do for the next episode, but we'll find out then. In the meantime, feel free to go ahead and like if you have enjoyed what you have seen and heard today. And don't forget to subscribe, that way you'll get notifications as to when I put videos up online for all the various games and flight sims that I play. Okay, so now that these boys are home, they're just going to kind of pull up here and drop off their precious cargo. And we will have a reunion of sorts with a 12-pack of beer. So that will do it for me. So, from beautiful Vietnam... Fubai Air Base, thank you again for watching, and I will catch you on the next episode. Ciao!